everybody uh welcome back to my channel um excuse my hair I've just woken up but um i just wanted to talk to you guys about where i'm at with all of this you know getting prepared and etc etc can i just show you where i'm where i'm at this is where this is where i'm at see this little van that's about as close as i've got to getting a caravan <laughs> So, um, yeah, so that's where it's at. So, <laughs> look, I don't laugh at my life because my life is really freaking funny. But the things that happen to me just don't happen to other people. So I contemplate everything here. So this is why I'm sitting here having my coffee and I'm going, what in the heck did I do in a former life to deserve the stuff that happens to me? So we are still plodding along and we're saving, slowly getting through everything in the house. I've got to a point in the house where I won't be selling anymore until we are definite with the caravan and stuff. So I think I touched on my last video about uh, we actually bought a van, but it sort of didn't go quite to plan. So um, yeah, that, that's a whole new contentious issue, but it didn't go to plan. There was a little hitch in the loan application, which, you know, these things can happen. And I think you need to be really, really aware that, you know, you assume that everything's going to go perfectly and things don't always quite go to plan. So for me, uh, things did not quite go to plan and it sent me in a bit of a spiral of despair. And... Um, I've got kind of cynical now, which, um, you know, I've come through the other end. So part of the process, um, you get mad, you get a bit sad, then you get down and really depressed, and then you get cynical, <laughs> and then you pick yourself up and you get on with it. So I'm continuing to save. I've saved quite a substantial amount of money, and I'm still looking for a caravan. And obviously, uh, the way that we are in uh, uh, with the van situation here, yeah, so it's not like the best. It's probably the worst possible time and I cannot work my stupid gimbal. I say that every time. I just can't. It just does not. It's just, I don't know, there's something about this one. I try to get it in the middle, but you know what? This is equipment. This is what happens when you're on budget because it's actually the opposite of what it actually should be. It just doesn't make any sense. So when you like turn it, it goes the opposite. So anyway, off the track there. So you you have these you have this um a thought in your head about how things are going to pan out and things don't always pan out the way that you think it's going to so for for obviously for me being single parent on my own trying to get everything done by myself uh i I've hit a few hitches here and there so life just throws little curveballs at you and this is taking so long that it was really, really super hard not to get yourself bogged down into that sort of depressive state. Uh, I am, I've been out of that for a little while, but you know, you sort of get dips and troughs, but I'm sort of at a point in my life where it's like, I just so need to get out of my job and I've got to do, like get, just change something because this, it's, I just can't keep doing this. So, but it's, it's just, it's just, I picked the worst possible time to actually go and get a van. So no vans, this is nothing available. There's nothing within my price range that I can uh, budget and, uh, yeah, make work. And also just like sizes and stuff like that. And I'm sort of, you know, I've got to look at age as well. I mean, this has got to be our home. So I don't want anything that's too like falling apart and broken and you know I've got to do a lot of repairs to it because you know I although I'm kind of handy it's it's just not something like I want to I want to sort of tackle while I'm like going around and doing the things that I want to do so yeah life does this to you I've got to say um, I didn't sort of expect some of the things that have happened to happen, but they have. And also, like, we're in the middle of this stupid pandemic, which uh, I'll be happy for it to be finished, but that's the way it is. And vaccination stuff and all sorts of things are going on in my life that are making everything a little trickier. And obviously, um, Toby ain't 
doing the best that he could be doing as well because he's all over the place. We're going to be starting homeschooling him next year. So a lot of changes for him as well. And uh, yeah, it just ends up being a, a real big mess. So it's trying to look for a tow vehicle, nothing. What do I get? I just don't know anymore. And, you know, at the end of the day, I would love a new car, but one new cars, you have to wait for a super long time anyway to get them. But also they're so expensive. And I, I haven't got an income for $65,000 car, $70,000 car. You know what? And this is a whole thing. Like I sat here this morning having my coffee and I just laugh. Like everyone else, you know, you, you, you watch all the YouTube channels. <laughs> you watch all of like, yeah, your vanning families and they just bought the new van and off they go and they get it and that and you are on a flipping shithole van budget so you can go and get your little shithole van that's all you can afford <laughs> and the reality versus what actually happens is completely you know like what you see versus reality <laughs> I should really do a parody on that because this is like so funny. So I think when you're watching like YouTubers or people who have been able to do the lifestyle in a sort of more luxurious way, it gives you a bit of a false sense. I want to ground all you people. I'm going to ground you all for, for the povos, you know, the people who can't afford anything because that's me in a nutshell. I can afford shit. So... My my whole budget, my whole plan on what I was actually going to do is completely being thrown out of the water. And trying to get your brain to adjust to that is the hardest part. So come follow my journey because then maybe you might not feel so bad when you have to get your shit all of a van leaking and, and whatnot. But hang on, it will build memories, guys. That's the thing, you know, you've got to got to build memories here with this journey it's not just about um getting out there and going to see everything in the perfect van and the perfect car <laughs> we'll probably be broken down on the side of the road and there's your vlog for the day <laughs> join my pain <laughs> so yeah um pick yourself up dust yourself off and just remember that uh, there are others of us who who are in Povo Lane, and and uh, we're not going to be uh, like travelling in the pristine, perfect van in the perfect family. And the fact is, is that like anything on social media, nothing's perfect. It's just what people want you to see. So it's like you know, someone will go out to dinner, and they'll show you their perfect dinner, and it looks really nice. It looks like they've had a really really good night out, but afterwards they have a big huge fight and you know they're almost divorced so you gotta you gotta take it with a grain of salt so look looking for a, a secondhand van is not the end of the world and it doesn't have to be the best of the best and if as I've like I'm um, showing you before like being in in a budget and it's called actual wage that's what Dave Ramsey said and obviously I follow a lot of the, his uh, saving stuff and like getting out of debt and stuff but yeah, actual wage, you have to, in this whole hustle and bustle of keeping up with the Joneses, I forgot who I was as a person. And I am not, I'm not the fancy schmancy girl. Like I'm quite happy to camp in a swag. And I think I got caught up in all of this kind of, you know, Oh, everyone's going away and this is what's happening oh look at all these nice fans and you go to the fan shows and there's everything's there and it's all you know beautiful and you get caught up in it but then you know the reality hits and you realize that especially like I said I've got one income coming in and so it it certainly does make a, a big difference I just want you guys to understand that we're not all in the situation where we can purchase the best of the best and that's okay because you can still do the lifestyle regardless and that's what I'm here for. I'm going to show you that you can take a shithole of the other way because that's about my budget right now. A clunky old car and still 
see the things that those people could see in the best of the best and actually you're probably going to build up a better lot of memories um in with it too because <laughs> you're having to sort of suffer excuse my washings in the background i didn't really want to show you that um yeah so stuck in the house feeling like you actually uh, are getting completely and utterly nowhere is really hard on the brain i can tell you now i'm a very very positive active person but it's really bogged me down now i just watched this thing on uh netflix i think it is and it was called made and made pretty much sums up my life really ultimately in a nutshell actually it was it it um, triggered me a bit because it was very, very similar. Um, but I also got, you know, three kids at that particular time when all that sort of stuff was going on. But in that, there's a part in there where she's in this, basically she's in a hole. And it was, the interesting thing of that is if you've ever suffered from like depression or a mental illness, it's was such a good analogy because that's exactly how you feel you can hear things going on around you but you just can't dig yourself out of it and it's like people go oh snap out of it snap out of it oh you know it's, you know, you've got to be positive don't be negative da, 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 da. what it is it's almost like a brain's it's a brain's protective mechanism and that's what i look at it as now like instead of like us being um I don't know, like judgmental of people with um, mental illnesses. We should really look at it like a, a it's a hole that they're in. They can hear everything that's going around them, but it's a protective mechanism because the trauma's been so bad. I don't know. I guess that's kind of how I how I'm looking at it. Is that it's because the trauma has been so bad for the for that particular person. They're in this hole, and sometimes I need someone to dig them out, and sometimes you need to dig yourself out. So digging, I dig myself out. I dig myself out every single time because there isn't really a lot. I, you know, I've got friends and stuff like that, but you know, my family, yeah, well, you know, it's another story. They're not bad people or anything like that. I've got, I've got good family as such, but you know, they all do their own thing. So you dig yourself out, but it's okay, you know, like it's okay to not be like everyone else. It's okay not to have the things that everyone else has. It doesn't mean that you're not successful. Because I think just getting out of bed some days, you're successful. So, yeah. So don't be disheartened by the fact that your budget is not allowing you to do what you think you should be doing or like everyone else. Because I want to show you that just because you're on a budget doesn't mean that you can't enjoy life. So the other thing is, is uh, what I want to to go with my channel is I'd like to do more philanthropy should I say it it's more it's not about me you know I'm here on this planet for everyone else I'm here for you I'm here for everyone else like I'm alive and I've got my own kids and my own life and everything like that but I want to I want to be part of the lives of people who are not the mainstream of what we see i would love to hear your stories i would love if you know there's people that are sort of near me and they're traveling around australia in their clunky old vans and their clunky old cars i want to i want to chat to you i want to talk to you i want you people to be part of my life i want to i want to find out more about uh, how you, how you do things and, and how it's changed your life. I don't want to talk to... Well, I do want to talk to the people who've got, you know, the nicest of everything. But I want to chat to the people that have done it tough. It's a different... It's a whole different uh, perspective. It's different because you, you've had to fight and work hard for everything that you've got. And it's not that people don't work hard for what they get. Everyone works hard for what they get. But when you've had adversity in your life and you, and you finally get to your goal of where you should be, it's, it's been a lot more of a slog. So it's kind of like akin to 
working in a um, like being a I don't know a, a road digger or something and you've had to hand dig roads all your life or you've sat in front of a computer screen in an office and you still get paid similar money but one's worked really hard to get that money in the sense of their body and mind and soul is destroyed as opposed to just maybe their mind I don't know so I've worked really hard all my life I've raised four children basically on my own I've had some minor support by fathers Toby's dad is in his life still so you know he tries his best uh, the, the first my first three children I pretty much raised them by myself so my life didn't pan out quite the way I thought it was going to and all these little hiccups that I seem to get on the road of where I want to go just makes me more determined and it's one of those things where you just get up one more time then you get knocked down and that is the key to it because if you get up one more time then you actually get kicked down you will succeed and you just have to keep hold of the goal so while I'm sitting here and I'm still probably at least three or four months away from anything so you can look back at this video and go well you know look where she's got and you know hopefully in a few months you might see me clunky old van in the back you know, in, the, in my yard and uh, us getting organized and ready to, to ship off out of here but as far as like at the house goes and all the things in the house now I've pretty much sold everything that I wanted to sell most of the stuff that's left here if I don't sell it all I'll probably pack it up and put it into storage and sell it off slowly rather than um, stressing out about it and and going oh I've got to sell got to sell got to sell I don't really want to sell it at stupid prices I just uh, I just you know like a decent amount of money which will go towards other things and of course that's the other thing you know if you if you're getting if you're getting loans for everything it you've got to factor that in and budget that in on your travels and you know not everybody is going to have like two incomes coming in or they've got a huge savings behind them to be able to to afford the luxury of going away for a long period of time if you've sold your house and you've got all that money some of us don't have that disposable income then I'm one of them so if I can do this guys you guys can so if you're watching this and you are on a low income or you you know you're struggling or you're like me a single parent or solo parent um solo person wanting to go away you've just lost your job you haven't got any money you know and then you're looking at all these luxurious bands and you're getting down and depressed don't because i'm your poster girl for you can do it uh, i'm still struggling along i've got a decent amount of savings which i'm really um, proud of you know like i look at it sometimes and i'm going oh it's just not enough it's just not enough but i've got to i've got to pat myself on the back for how far i've come because i've paid down fifteen thousand dollars worth of debt of credit card i've paid down a five thousand dollar car loan and i've saved twenty five thousand dollars and this is in two years so for someone on a solo income, and I've only been really working two days a week because of my son's needs. So don't get disheartened. Yes, it's not going to be enough to pay for what I want to have, but I've got to lower my bar down to what I can afford. I've got to act my wage. That's what, that's what um, Dave Ramsey says. At your wage, you can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. And... I'm going to show you how to make a clunky old van something special because I think the clunkers and the older cars and the older this, that and the other, we live into such a throwaway society, but they are going to give us more memories than the perfect pristine one. And also, the other thing to consider is that some of these new vans are falling apart already anyway. So there's nothing wrong with a good, sturdy old clunker. So hang in there, people, if you're contemplating this journey and you're really povo like me. And watch what I do. I'm not going to be releasing videos all the time. I'll probably release them very spasmodically, but when some events happen and, and whatnot, um, they will. If you're sort of around in the um, southern, like South Australian uh, area 
and you're a vanner and you're vanning it in a clunker, I'd really love to hear from you. Um, I'm going to organise to get an email address, which I'll hopefully put down in the description, um, and you can email me directly. But I'd love to interview you if you're in the south of Australia at this point in time. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have an amazing day and hang in there. We can do this together, guys. See you later.